Hello and welcome to Just Hoops. The Baylor Bears under Scott Drew in the last 20 years had solidified themselves as one of the premier programs in college basketball. In the last five seasons, they've really built themselves on the foundation of defense, holding opponents to under 70 points per game and finishing all these seasons with 20 plus wins. In this video, we're going to look at their zone defense in particular and break things down a little bit. But first, here are some stats. They're holding opponents to 0.85 point per possession, shooting 40% from the field, and the zone is just very stout, and you can see this through these numbers, making things very difficult across the board for teams. So now let's dive into the film and see what this zone is and what makes it so hard for teams in college basketball to score on. So to start the breakdown, I think we got to talk about the basics, starting with the alignment. It's a 2-3-1-1-3 look zone, which you can see here. The balls activate by the top of the tandem. The second guy in the tandem is going to cover the foul line. The wings are high and wide, and the big man is floating that middle of the floor, really being that last line of pressure to protect at the rim and make plays there. Now to go to this next clip, we're going to freeze frame it again against West Virginia. We got the top of the tandem, bottom of the tandem covering the nail. The wings are high and wide. Low man is covering that rim area, protecting down there. Just these clips, I want to show what the zone looks like. There's no real definition of what the zone is because they don't operate like a 1-3-1. They don't operate like a 2-3. They operate in this amoeba style 1-1-3 look that you can argue is even a 1-1-2-1 look. It's just a very creative zone that applies pressure to the ball, but it also forces the ball in different directions you can we'll talk about it more as we go but you can see that the top of the zone forces the guys to the baseline and the wings of the zone force guys to the middle it's a pinch within the zone and how it works and the big man is that last line of defense i really just like the activity it allows their guys at the point to get up into the ball be physical be in passing lanes it does a good job at manipulating offenses that get weird opportunities typically in the second level and I just think that this zone in terms of how it operates is just such a hard scout because you can't scout for a 1-3-1, you can't scout for a 2-3 to get offensive looks, and it just puts you in a weird predicament every time down the floor because you're not necessarily sure where the openings are, and when you take those opportunities, they're typically low percentage shots. So to start really diving into the zone though, it starts with that tandem in the middle third of the floor. The top two guards play the ball and the nail. Those are the two responsibilities. You're gonna cover that middle third of the floor any way you could. You're typically gonna stay above the logo, above the foul line, and your job is to guard your yard at the point and then sink back and protect at the nail. This clip here against Kansas State, you can see it. The ball is activated and the second guy is floating the nail. It's kind of like a 1-3-1 look, but in terms of that middle guy, instead of dropping, his responsibility is up top. It's an inverse 1-3-1 one, one with this tandem, and these two guys bounce off of each other. Here against West Virginia, you're going to see them go back and forth from the nail to the ball, and they're going to force guys baseline. You're not going to force them into the middle of the floor. You're going to force them into the wings. These two do a great job at just making that presence at the point, being the head of the snake of the zone, and they communicate and are constantly connected. They do a great job at covering space and making things hard to get to the foul line, and secondly, making it very tough for the ball handler at the point to get where if he wants. You're getting up into the ball, being physical, being aggressive, but also you're guarding your yard. You're guarding to your containment. The way in which you are responsible for the point and that middle third they do a great job at just going back and forth and making everything difficult in the middle of the floor and really being that primary just defensive force to start every possession. These last two clips just show the responsibility and effort it takes to play this tandem spot. Coming down from the nail and contesting that jumper there and here forcing a turnover. Constantly being connected, communicating, and really being the head of the snake with force and pressure. Now to go to the wings. The wings are what allow this zone to work. The tandem is primarily going to make things difficult, be the primary force applier. And then the wings are guys that are high and wide. They're gonna force everything toward the nail, toward the middle of the floor, toward that guy that's covering at the foul line. And they're gonna just be the guys that bounce back and forth. You're gonna bounce from the baseline up to the wing. It's kind of like a two, three in how they operate and that they are responsible for being up and high and making it difficult and bumping off 
to the tandem. And then they're also responsible for that back line in terms of if they overload, they got to sink back. They got to be the protectors. They got to be guys that are able to move, be fluid, and make plays across the floor. They're very matchup based where they're going to lift very high if the baseline's empty. But if the baseline's loaded, they're going to sink back, play in the middle, and just be able to make a play both on the perimeter and back in the paint. The way that the wings move and operate is very unique. It's very Syracuse 2 3 esque in terms of how they get up very high, bump off, get back, and then they're playing the middle ground, trying to bait you into different plays. Just to summarize quick, when it comes to guarding the ball, they're going to force you to the middle of the floor. And when they're positioning, they're going to match up, play high first, and then sink back, play the middle of the floor, and be a safety. They are just the key to the zone, and it's fun to watch the activity and connection that these guys have on the sides. Last but not least, we got to talk about the middle of the zone. The big man is responsible for the rim. He is the last line of defense. You can tell through the first two, the tandem and the wings, that they are very high, wide, and spread, that they are applying pressure at the point, being very active on the perimeter, trying to force turnovers, make the offense make bad decisions. So the big man has to be responsible to sink in, make plays at the rim, and just be a presence that prevents easy drives. That first clip, his presence made it impossible for the offense to get to the rim. Here against Arkansas, you can see that he is floating, he's scourging, and then he makes a good solid wall-up contest at the rim. Just the ability to always be there, always be present, and always make things difficult at the rim is what allows him to be successful and the zone to be successful because they have that last line of defense. Allowing the big man to play to his strengths while also allowing the perimeter guys to just go out and play and just try to make plays happen is what allows this zone to really break free and make things difficult for offenses. You can see that the way that he sinks back, he's pointing, he's directing, he's communicating, he's being a true anchor below, and he's always making the right play. In terms of his positioning, he's typically matched up with the guy closest to him on the low positioning, whether it's the block or the high post. He's typically floating by them, but also you can see that there's variability in which he will sit at the rim, and then there's other times where he'll shadow the strong side of the floor, cover that strong side block, have his hands out, be active, be communicative, and just try to cover up up as much space at the rim as possible to deter drives and then also prevent opportunities at the rim. The big man is a huge part of any zone and it applies directly to what Baylor got going with their 1-1-3 one, one, look. And then lastly, there's a high level of nuance to this zone. First, the amoeba style in which they move. And secondly, they can show a zone and after that first pass matchup. And that is what they did here against West Virginia. After the first pass, they lifted a fist in the air, signaling that they are matching up. They do a good job at communicating, flying around and finding their matchup, and then playing a solid 30 second grinded out possession. Just showing a different look, the first pass down the floor makes things difficult for an offense and they're one of the best man defenses in basketball basketball over Scott Drew's time at Baylor. This clip here, same thing. First pass, they put the fist in the air and everybody matches up with theirs and it turns into a man-to-man -man possession. The nuance and variance within the zone makes it very difficult for offenses to know what's coming. Just that first pass flowing into a zone offense typically and then next thing you know they're matched up could definitely throw a wrench at you and just their overall movement in the zone. They have an odd positioning as I talked about at the beginning, but then they move as an amoeba. There's not typically an exact rotation, but overall it's very challenging for offenses to find advantages and find angles due to the communication connectivity and the variance within this 1-1-3 look. The Baylor Bears have been one of the best watches in college basketball this year, in my opinion. I really enjoy this zone, so I hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown, learned something about the variance within basketball, especially at the college level, and just how different teams do different things, especially at the defensive end. So I hope you guys enjoyed. For more content like this, please like, subscribe, and share, and we'll catch you in the next one.